Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's go over how we can improve the dev experience when using Tailwind 2.0 as well as Webpack. So if you've used these tools together, chances are you know how long certain things take to do in development. For example, when you start up the Webpack Watcher, you could be waiting five or even 10 seconds, potentially longer, depending on your machine's specs. And also when you make any changes to your CSS file, like adding an apply class or whatever you wanna do, then it does take quite a bit of time as well. You know, upwards of five seconds, again, depends on your machine specs. And that's kind of a productivity killer, right? I know at Tailwind, uh, specifically, you're not supposed to add that much custom CSS, so that's not too big of a deal. But the Webpack Watcher startup time is a killer, especially if you happen to be using Docker. So the application that we're looking at here is a Dockerized Flask app that's using Webpack and Tailwind and a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is available. It's up on GitHub. I posted it a couple of days ago. And uh, that's the code that we're going to look at. So I will leave a link to this one in the description if you want to follow along. So let me just demonstrate what I mean, though, by Docker, right? So if I do a Docker Compose up, it is going to up all the containers associated to this project. And everything right now is ready to go, except for Webpack. We can see compilation starting, waiting, waiting. There it goes. Like it took basically five and a half seconds, almost six seconds for Webpack to get all ready to go. And if I jump back over here to the browser and I reload, we can see like, you know, things are looking good, right? Everything is up and running based on that. And the problem when it comes to using Docker is like, let's say that you're working on your web app, right? And you write some code that has a syntax error or whatever, like your web server needs to go down and get restarted because like bugs, right? So with Docker Compose, you normally do a Docker Compo uh, Control C there to stop everything and then you up everything. And having to wait this six seconds or five and a half seconds on my machine specs every single time is a real productivity killer. Like it's enough to the point where it's like a deterrent where I don't even want to use Tailwind because I don't wanna to have to wait that long. And uh, the reason why it is uh, such a long time is we can see that it produces like almost four megs of CSS. Now you might be wondering like, who in the right mind would wanna have a four meg CSS payload, especially like in production, if you just are using a tiny bit of CSS. And uh, fortunately in production, it's a non-issue. In fact, in production, Tailwind produces a payload that's smaller than most other web frameworks by like an order of magnitude. So like if I actually run this in production mode, it will go and purge out all the Tailwind classes that were generated. And this payload will, will go from like, you know, 3.75 megs all the way down to like, like 11 kilobytes. And that's before gzip, it's uh, quite remarkable. But in any case, like the reason why this takes forever is because like a ridiculous amount of CSS is being generated and compiled by Webpack and, and monitored and watched and all this other stuff. So let's go over how we can uh, first address this startup time issue. And what's really cool about this one, like it's just a Webpack config option that we need to enable. So if you're using Webpack straight up or you happen to be using Webpacker with Rails or Laravel is like version of that, like I think it's called Mix or whatever, you know, as long as you can customize this Webpack config option, then you are going to be good to go. So I'm gonna open up this project here and I'm gonna take a look here at the Webpack config in this example project that happens to be in an assets folder. And the code that I have commented out here, because right now, you know, the code that we were just executing is like the before version, it's not the after, because I wanted to show the before and after. So I'm gonna uncomment these lines here and uh, save that file and let's go over them a bit. So by default, uh, Webpack is going to cache things to memory, not disk. And the issue with memory is, and it's not so much an issue, it's like the reality of the situation, when the process dies or the container dies, you know, its memory allocations are gonna go away as well. So the cache is effectively blown out every time you stop the process. So we're configuring Webpack now to cache things to disk. And we're gonna tell it to cache things to this specific directory. You know, in my case, I'm in an app or in an assets directory with the Webpack config. So I wanna go back a directory and just dump it out into, and let me just show all files here so we can see that there is no dot Webpack cache folder. Again, you could put this anywhere you want. You know, if you're in a Rails app, you might wanna put that in your temp directory instead of a, you know, a dot directory here. But in any case, uh, this is all you really need to do. And in my case, I happen to be using Docker and I have my node modules directory in a different location. I'm not gonna get into why in that video, that's all sort of explained in the readme file of the project and some other stuff. But in any case, we have the snapshot setting where I guess snapshots sort of control how Webpack invalidates the cache. Like there's some importance to this where it's related to the cache and you wanna tell it to where your node modules directory is. So that's why I have that configured here as well. And when we do that and I go back to here and I stop this, then the next time we start things up, it's actually still gonna be pretty slow, right? The five and a half seconds because the cache hasn't been written to disk yet. Uh, right now, like this, compilation is when those uh, cache files are going to be written out. So we can see again, five and a half seconds, right? But if I kill this and start it up the next time, 
and all future times, as long as the cache is available, then this should happen pretty much immediately. Two, 300 milliseconds, whatever it happens to be. There we go, right? 350 milliseconds, which makes it effectively instant for my use case, right? It's like, it just spins up at everything else. It's not a problem at all. And if I jump back over here and reload my sidebar, we can see we have that Webpack cache. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit easier to read this one if I just do like an LSLA here, human readable sizes recursively for that Webpack cache here. We can see it dumped out these pack files or whatever that are pretty big in size, right? 41 megs, uh, I don't know what in the world Webpack is doing where it needs to generate a 41 meg file for some CSS and like practically, well, there is some JavaScript uh, like library wise, but in any case, you know, Webpack writes out this cache and uh, there it is. And as we update things, like that cache is going to be uh, updated. And you know, every single time now in the future, when we start this project, it's gonna start really, really fast. And that is really, really, really nice. So now let's go over maybe changing how we have uh, Tailwind installed basically just changing around some imports to make it a little bit faster to make changes to our CSS. So let me first demonstrate like the before. So if I go to my app.css file, then uh, this is how you install Tailwind, right? So if I go back to Tailwind's docs over here and we take a look here at installation instructions, if you're using post CSS, which I happen to be using, then uh, you can make your imports like this. Or if you're not using post CSS, you can also use the Tailwind syntax here or directive or whatever. In either case, it's basically the same thing. And uh, that's exactly what we have here. And then we can see it's running here, cool. So let me go and make a change to the CSS. So let's just say I wanna change the body background color to be, I don't know, some like really obnoxious like blue or something like that. This would be an awful thing to do with Tailwind because you'd set, you know, the BG blue, like 900, whatever the class would be. But, you know, let me save the file here just to demonstrate uh, how long it takes for certain things to get changed. And if we take a look here at compilation, we can see it's about a five second wait. So it's taking a little bit longer than normal because I'm recording a video, but uh, also combined with the caching though, if I were to change, and actually before I change that, let me go back to here and reload the page. We can see we have that uh, nice dark blue black round with black text, basically the most unreadable combo ever. But if I change this to be, like a little bit of a, uh, of a darker color. And uh, this should be, I guess, probably a little bit faster than five and a half seconds. There we go, like almost three seconds, right? Uh, that's because the caching is also benefiting this as well. Like I guess Webpack can figure out like, oh, you know, we already have something with the body, something with the background color. We're just changing this attribute. I don't know the details, but it's a little bit faster thanks to the cache as well. And, you know, if I go over here and reload, you know, there it is, right? A little bit darker blue, even harder to read now for the black text. So now let's go over improving this so we can get this to be a little bit faster. And this is actually something that I picked up when Googling around, like, why in the hell Tailwind 2.0 is so slow, like with Webpack. And uh, this thread came up, there's like 23 comments. And, you know, there's a lot of people talking about this is slow, that is slow, blah, 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 blah. And someone made this uh, really great suggestion to break things up, basically. So, and again, this might be wrong right now, but I'm pretty sure it's the utilities import that's really, really big. It's responsible for uh, just generating of those 3.75 megs, like a majority of it is just this. So, and maybe the components as well, but the base is, I think, very small. But in any case, here's what I did. So I went to my app.js file and instead of importing the CSS in the CSS file, we can actually import Tailwind in JavaScript, and with the way I have Webpack configured, it will emit like EMIT or basically produce a CSS file. So actually, let me save that file and just go back to my like my layout file so I can show you here. Uh, I, I do just have a link tag to a regular CSS file that gets produced as well as a JavaScript file. Like it's not, you know, just because it's being imported from JavaScript doesn't mean like it doesn't produce a CSS file. And actually, let me also go back to that uh, CSS file here and remove all the stuff because we don't need it. So instead of importing from the CSS, we just import it from the JavaScript. And we also break things up. So if I open up that before and also the after, then we can see, and here's the before, like the before is just the base and the after is components and utilities. And there squeezed between both are, uh, well, is our custom CSS that we want. So if I go back to here and I open up this app that CSS here, you know, it's an empty file. And if I go back to here, we can see uh, Webpack compiled everything in 100 milliseconds, great. So let me just go and maybe add a new body here, like background color. I don't know, this time let's go with red, right? Probably equally as bad as blue, potentially even worse. So if I save this file here and go back to here, we can see 146 milliseconds. And if I go back to here and reload, then 
you know, there's our red. So we went from basically like two and a half seconds down to whatever that was, 150 milliseconds. And that's freaking fast. Uh, this is really, really nice now. And if you're wondering, like if you're familiar with using uh, Tailwind, they have this idea of like, you can add your own components or override base things and do things like that. So like, let's say for example, and also let me bring this back to be a little bit better than a red background so we can actually look at it. And there we go, 137 milliseconds, reload the page and it's back to white. I can finally, uh, my eyes can rest well. But we can see here, right? We have all sorts of Tailwind stuff here, but there's no custom classes for this. This is purely, purely, purely just uh, built in Tailwind classes, right? BG Gray 700, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'll do some separate videos on Tailwind. By the way, let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. But in any case, let's just add like a custom button class based off of uh, Tailwind's documentation. And I've already got this copied off from uh, off screen here, but let me go back to here and go back to this one file and paste in uh, this component here to create like a, a blue button, like something you might see in, I don't know, Bootstrap or something like that. So, uh, and the reason I'm demonstrating this one is because the way uh, Tailwind's documentation is set up, it like if you, as long as you namespace what like what layer you want to apply this to, like components in this case, like this all still works even with this broken up uh, formatting. And also, let me just close these out just so we have a little bit better uh, readability here. But we can see here I've added this new component, right? Uh, button blue. I'm going to save that file. Go back to here. This will take a little bit longer because, uh, but it's not too bad, right? Two and a half seconds there. But I've got this button blue. So let me go back to my uh, page home or whatever, and maybe just start using this button somewhere. Like, I don't know, like I'll just go div class button blue. Probably would never make a, an actual div a button. I don't know why I did that, but hello, this is cool, right? There we go. Save the file, go back to the browser, do a reload. And uh, we can see here, hello, this is cool. Totally not styled at all. Let me see what I messed up this time. Uh, oh. Button button is probably not correct. <laughs> it needs to be button blue. All right, there we go. Going back to here, reloading. And, uh, you know, there's our blue div, right? Essentially a button. Uh, probably we want to make it a div. I don't know why I chose div. Live videos for the win. But you can see here, though, you know, if I go back to that app.css file, uh, that's all it really took to add a custom class with Tailwind, and it was pretty speedy. So if I want to change that to be, I don't know, maybe a different shade of blue, we go back to here, 400 milliseconds, and while, while you know, tweaking your custom button, now it's a little bit lighter. And, uh, you know, if you're iterating on a custom uh, component that you want to make that's composed of a whole bunch of different applied classes like this, then the iteration is pretty fast, right? You can change all these things that uh, to be whatever you need. Although technically with Tailwind, like, you know, best practices, it may be a good idea to apply all of these classes directly in your template. And then if you did want to extract it out to a component, like when you're already ready to know like the exact values you want, you drop it in here. But, uh, you know, that's a topic for another video. But with that said, that is basically how you can get Tailwind to be uh, quite a bit nicer in development. And uh, yeah, all of this is open source. Like the good version is here, right? It's our, all these changes are applied. So if I jump over to the Webpack config, we can see that. Cool. So with that note, uh, or on that note, uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop any comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. With that said, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.